Thanks for watching AM Northwest this morning. Our next guest says the key to making our New Year's resolutions last beyond January comes down to science. And here to explain, we're happy to welcome back the author of Human Lie Detection and Body Language 101, Vanessa Van Edwards. Good to see you. Hi. Almost getting ready for New Year's resolution. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, true. Now, now you say that you, you have to take first your emotional temperature. What is yes. your emotional temperature? Yes. So this is all setting the process for not all goals are created equal, right? We know, research has told us that people who set goals are happier, they're more successful, but we have to set them right. So the first thing I want you to do is Take your emotional temperature, right. as you just mentioned. And this is looking at your current life right now and seeing how do you feel about the different areas of your life. So I have something called a goal wheel. Okay. Um, and this is five different areas. And I want you to look at this. And we have these for download for you as well. Look at each area of your life. Business, friends, family, personal passions, like your side projects, spiritual. spiritual. This can be faith or work-life balance or mindset and health. Okay. And then I want you to rate yourself on a scale from one to five. One being needs a lot of work, five being stellar awesome. Okay. So that's how things are now. How things okay. are now. So I have a, an, a picture of mine, if you want to see it, um, where I marked sort of my lines. So you can okay. see that in business, I feel like I have a lot to work on this year. Whereas friends and family, I feel pretty good. Personal passion's pretty oh, good. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, so really, my area is going to be business. So a lot of my goals are going to be in this area. This is a way to take a very quick snapshot of mm -hmm. your temperature right now. So and that sure. helps you, I'm guessing, uh, you know, more narrow focus what you want to work on as opposed to, well, I want to lose weight. Now, of course, I need to make more money and be too broad. Exactly, because that's what happens. We sit down and we're like, what do I want? This helps us focus in. So okay. once you've done this, I want you to do something called an ideal self exercise. This is one of my favorite things to do. Ideal every... self exercise. Yes, it's one of my favorite things to do. So next to each of the areas, I want you to write down at the end of next year, what would your ideal self look like? in that area. So for businesses, there are certain business things. This can be a sentence, a word, a paragraph. How do you want that area to look at well, the let, end Well, give me an year? example like your business. So sentence. for business, um, I would love to be able to have um, more of my labs in different cities. Okay. That's something that I really want. That would be my ideal for the end of 2015. So that's in a sentence. Or for health, it might be, um, I want to be able to run a mile in 12 minutes. Okay. Right? So once you've done your ideal self, the next step, and this is the most important, is to make a MAC goal. So a MAC, MAC goal. MAC what does goal. MAC stand for? MAC stands for, it's an acronym I came up with trying to remember it, is measurable, accountable, I'm sorry, measurable, actionable, and competent. Okay. okay. So that the reason for this is cuz have you ever had those new year's resolutions you make them and they just mm, kind of go by the wayside every year mm -hmm. every year. So the reason is because research has found that we have to make sure that our goals are measurable, actionable and competent. Measurable. So by the end of the year could you measure, yes, I've done that. Lo instead of saying I want to lose weight, I want to lose 10 pounds. Instead of saying I want to have uh, labs in different cities, I want labs in five new cities. Okay. So measurable. Would you even name the cities? Yeah, would that would be even better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I want you to look at your ideal self and then start to break it down into measurable, actionable, and then competent means, could I actually do this in a year? The hardest part about New Year's resolutions, if you set something that just takes a little bit longer, you set yourself up for the end of the year of not being able to or make failure. it. Or failure. And, and, right. and if you have failure, that just dissuades you from trying again <laughs> oftentimes, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. And then you don't even want to make a resolution yeah. again. So after you've done your MAC goal, then you want to go into to committing it. So right now, before uh, you think about it too much, I want you to make your to-do list for your goals and or take out your calendar and input in what you have to do to make okay, that Okay, so let's let's use the run a mile in 12 minutes. Love it, okay. yes. Okay, what, what is on your list to achieve that goal? Cool, so it could be um, getting new tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. It could be um, uh, setting a trail, that, making sure you mark a trail that's exactly a mile or two miles or however it is you want to go. Mm -hmm. And then your to-do list would be, okay, Monday morning I'm going to run the first minute of that mile and then I'm going to walk the rest. And then by the next week it's going to be able to run two minutes. So take out your calendar, take out your to-do list and break it down into those little tiny chunks. If you have that waiting for you in your calendar and your to-do list, it's so much easier to be able to do each part of those all those goals or steps. In general, is it a good idea for people to set goals? Definitely. So what they found is, is that not only for career success, so people who set goals specifically for work, but also just people who set goals in general, it keeps them hopeful, it keeps them moving towards something. So it actually increases our overall happiness levels as well. 
Oh. Let's talk about personal passions for a yes. minute. What, give us examples of what those are. I think it might be the hardest thing for people. Mm -hmm. So I actually have a personal passion goal this year. So I thought of personal passions, and you can see my, my rating wasn't too too low, but I was like, you know, I really want to spend more time reading. Mm -hmm. right? Like I, I have all these books people give me, and so I was like, I, my ideal self was be more well-read okay. right, by the end of the year. So then I had to break it down into a measurable, actionable thing. So I said, I want to read one book a month. I want to have 12 books at the end of the year. And so my to-do list was that I went and asked all my friends for their favorite book recommendations, mm -hmm. and then I went and bought all of the books off of Amazon and had them delivered to my house. So that I'm going to start in January where I'm going to have all these books lined up. So that would be like a personal passion that I'm actually taking action towards trying to bring that into so my life. So other examples could be, you know, learn to, learn to, learn to cook or, or learn yes. to make desserts or... Absolutely anything. Um, it could be even going on vacation, or it could be spending more time uh, with friends, learning a new dance move, whatever it is. Those are the things that sort of fulfill us beyond work and family. And then what happens, though, if you don't fulfill those? So the last step, very important, is accountability. So how do you get accountability on your goals? There's a couple different ways. First, a learning partner or a goal partner. Mm -hmm. So having a friend to say, could you fill out your goal wheel as well? Let's compare and let's meet every month to do it together. Or you can just post it on Facebook, post it on your social networks, yeah. get some accountability, ask oh, people to yeah. ask people to remind you about it, or you can post a post it on your mirror so you can see it every morning. I always just tell Helen what I plan to do, and then when I don't do it, she reminds me you didn't do it. <laughs> That's your your goal partner. Yeah, I didn't mean to be. It just turned out that way. Always good tips. Thanks so much. And uh, the, the Human Lie Detection Body Language 101 book, you can find that in all the places you find books. We'll have all the information on our website at katu.com. Good to see you. Thank you.